In the last two lectures, we saw about propositional logic. We saw what were propositions and what are the logical connectives. The logical connectives which we considered were and, are, not, implication and the equivalence. And we also saw some identities about logical connectives and logical expressions. And we saw how to simplify logical expressions. We also saw what is meant by a tautology, a contradiction and a contingency. Okay. Towards the end of the last lecture, I left you with a problem. We shall consider that problem. This will tell you how you can use, make use of logic and get uh, some problem solved. Here is the problem which we considered earlier. A certain country is inhabited only by people who either always tell the truth or always tell lies and who will respond to questions only with a yes or a no answer. The tourist comes to a fork in the road where one branch leads to the capital and the other does not. There is no sign indicating which branch to take, but there is an inhabitant Mr. Z standing at the fork. What single yes or no question should the tourist ask him to determine which branch to take? So, the situation is like this. There is a fork, but there is no sign board. But Mr. Z is sitting over here and the tourist comes like this. Now, he has to ask a single yes or no question so that if the answer is yes, he must take the left road. This is the left road and this is the right road and if the answer is no, he must take the right road. And there is a person Z sitting over there. but this tourist does not know whether he is a truth teller or a liar. So, there are four possibilities arise like this. The left road may lead to capital or the right road may lead to capital. And the person may be a truth teller or a liar. Now, if the answer is yes, he has to take the left road and if the answer is no, he has to take the right road. For all these possibilities, this should happen. But the liar always lies and if the answer is yes, he will say no and if the answer is no, he will say yes. So, the correct answer to the question the tourist has to ask is this. Left Right. Because the liar always inverts the answer, the correct answer should be like this. So, the question will be something like this. Is it true that you are a truth teller and the left road loads to capital or you are a liar and the right road leads to capital. The, this is a combination of these two using a R because either of these cases he will take the left road. So, you can read it like this. Is it true that you are a truth teller and the left road leads to capital or you are a liar and the right road leads to capital? So, look at this very carefully, if the if he is the truth teller and the left road leads to capital, he will say yes and so the person can take the left road. And if he is a liar and the right road leads to capital, the correct answer is yes, but the liar 
will say no and so if the if it is a combination of liar and right the answer will be no and he will take the right road. So, like that you can look into the all the four possibilities and you will see that this is the question he has to ask. This is a single S or no question by getting the answer yes he will take the le left road and by getting the answer no he will take the right road. It is not that this is a unique answer the question can be something like this also. Is it true that if I ask you whether the left road leads to capital you will say yes will not you. So, again you look at the four possibilities if he is the truth teller and the left road loads leads to capital he will say yes and so in the next case also it will be yes it is a combination of yes and yes. So, you will say yes and then you take the left road, but if he is a liar and the right road leads to capital the question will you say yes he has to say no, but because he is a liar you will say yes and a second negative if I ask you whether the left road leads to capital you will say yes he will say no, but because a second time negative he has to use he will say yes. So, whenever the answer is yes the left road will be taken. So, it is a sort of a double negation makes a positive so, some sort of an idea is there here. Another question which is equivalent to or which will serve the same purpose is this. If I ask the other kind of person whether the right road leads to capital he will say yes will not he will not he. Again here again you look into the four possibilities think carefully and uh, look into the four possibilities you will realize that this is also a proper question by getting the answer yes he will take the left road and no he will take the right road. So, this is uh, what we study about a proposition there are many interesting such uh, puzzles where you make use of logic uh, to solve a question like this. Let us consider this problem this also I mentioned in the last lecture Brown, Jones and Smith are suspected of income tax evasion they testify and are both as follows. Brown Jones is guilty and Smith is innocent Jones says if Brown is guilty then so is Smith then Smith says I am innocent but at least one of the others is guilty. The question is assuming everybody told the truth who is innocent and who is guilty assuming the innocent told the truth and the guilty lied who is innocent and guilty. The first part is easy as I told you in the last uh, lecture. Now, let us write these sentences in logical notation and try to get the answer. Suppose B stands for Brown in is innocent, Brown is innocent, then not B will stand for Brown is guilty, Brown is guilty. Similarly, J stands for Jones is innocent and not J stands for Jones is guilty. Similarly, S and not S, S will stand for S Smith is innocent and not S will stand for Smith is guilty. Now, what are the statements they are making? Brown is making the following statement Jones is innocent and Jones is guilty. What is the first statement? Jones is guilty and Smith is innocent. So, he says Jones is guilty and Smith is innocent. Jones says if Brown is guilty, then so is Smith. So, this should be written like this. Brown says not J and S that is Jones is guilty and Smith is innocent. Jones says if Brown is guilty that is not B then 
Smith is also guilty that is not B implies not S. Then Smith says I am innocent that is S and at least one of the others is guilty that is not B or not J one of the others is guilty. So, th the statements they make can be transcribed in this manner. Now, suppose everybody tells the truth all these three statements should be true in that case what is the answer you get Brown, Jones, Smith, he, Brown says all three statements are true Brown says not J and S. So, not J means Smith is guilty, guilty and uh, Jones is guilty and Smith is innocent. And you take the second sentence that is true not B implies not S. What is the contra positive of this? The contra positive of that will be S implies B. P implies Q means the contra positive is not Q implies not B. So, the contra positive of this is this that is true. That is if Smith is innocent then B is innocent, Brown is also innocent. We know that Smith is innocent. So, Smith is innocent. So, from this we get Brown is innocent. So, if all of them are telling the truth this is the answer you get. But the second portion of the question is if the innocent tell the truth and the guilty lied who is innocent and who is guilty. Now, first let us take Brown there are two possibilities Brown may be innocent or Brown may be guilty. Consider this possibility Brown is innocent then he must be telling the truth. So, in that case he must be telling the truth. So, the possibility is Brown is innocent Jones is guilty and Smith is innocent because he says that Jones is guilty and Smith is innocent. But in this case what is the statement of Jones? If Brown is guilty then so is Smith or the contra positive is if Smith is innocent then Brown is innocent that is also true. So, actually Jones is making a correct statement if he is guilty he must be making a wrong statement. So, this possibility goes so Brown cannot be innocent this possibility is ruled out. Now, what are the other possibilities Brown is guilty. So, Brown is guilty, but Jones and Smith they can be innocent both can be innocent or one can be innocent other can be guilty one can be guilty the other can be in these are the possibilities other four possibilities will be like this. Now, let us take this sentence this possibility Jones is innocent. So, he is telling the truth what is he saying if Brown is guilty then Smith is guilty, but Smith is innocent. So, he is making a wrong statement. So, this possibility is ruled out. Now, looking at this possibility Jones is saying a correct statement if Brown is guilty then so is Smith and Smith is saying I am innocent and so on he is making a wrong statement. So, this also works out correct. So, this looks a possible answer. Now, look at this again in these cases what is the statement of Jones? Jones says if Brown is guilty then so is Smith he is lying, but Smith is innocent. So, he must be telling the truth Smith says I am innocent, but at least one of the others is true this looks ok. Look at this uh, first statement Brown is uh, guilty. So, he must be saying a wrong statement. What is the statement of Brown? What is the statement of Brown? It is Smith is guilty, uh, Jones is guilty and Smith is innocent. Now, he is guilty. So, he must be selling a wrong statement. So, you have to take the neg negation of that that will be J R not S that is you have to rule out this possibility because 
here both of them are not correct. So, this is not correct. Now, what does this correspond to? This is again not a possible possibility because in this case Smith is guilty, so he must be lying and Jones is guilty, he must be lying. So, that statement that if Brown is guilty then so is Smith is a true statement which he is making, but he has to lie because he is guilty he is has to lie, but he is making a true statement. So, this possibility is also ruled out. So, the correct answer in this case is Brown guilty, Jones innocent and Smith guilty. So, next we study about predicates and quantifiers. Now, we already consider that a statement something like x greater than 3, x plus y is equal to 7, they are not propositions, they are assertions, but they are not propositions because the truth value you give them will depend upon what value are going to the going to give for the individual variables x and y. In English language, you may have statements like this she is tall and fair. X was born in city Y in the year Z. Or he was born in the city Y in the year Z or something that you can use pronouns. Pronouns will stand for variables, individual variables. Here we do not know whether it is correct or uh, true or false. It depends upon who that she is, and here who is his, who is uh, what is uh, the city Y, and which year is Z. Be depending upon that, the sentence will get a truth value or false. So, they are called predicates and the value you give to the individual variables will depend upon uh, will give you the proper truth value to that. Now, you usually denote the predicates like p, x, y, z. For example, x plus y is equal to z, this you can represent as some x y z. This stands for the predicate x plus y is equal to z or if you have m x y this may stand for x is married to y. Again we do not have a unique value, the value will depend upon what value you are going to give for individual variables x and y. In programs, you frequently come across statements like if x greater than 3, then say some y is equal to 5, else y is equal to 7. So, you assign the value y to y if x is greater than 3 and otherwise you give the value 7. Now, this is a predicate here. And when the control comes to this statement, you evaluate at that particular instance x may be having a particular value and you give that value to x and find out whether that statement becomes true or false. And if it is true, you execute the then portion and if it is false, you execute the else portion. Now, in general, you have a predicate of the form p of x or q of x y etcetera. This is a unary predicate. It has a single individual variables. This is a binary predicate. 
in general you may have something like p of x1 x2 xn you may have n individual variables in a predicate this is called a nre predicate or n place predicate Now, depending upon the value, you have to choose the value you give for x and y. In this case, x and y are to be taken from the set of human beings and in this case, x and y can be real numbers, z can be a real number or x and y can be integers, non-negative integers or integers and so on. They are chosen from a particular domain of values and that is called a universe or universe of discourse, universe or universe of discourse. Now, look at this x was born in the city y in the year z x takes value from the set of human beings, y takes value from the set of cities, z takes values from the set of years. So, that is called the underlying universe and in this case sum of x y z, it represents the predicate x plus y is equal to z. So, x y z may be taken from the set of integers or non-negative integers. Now, in such cases you may have to specify what is the underlying universe because a statement which may be true for integers may not be true for real numbers or a statement which is true for real numbers may not be true for integers and so on. So, underlying universe has to be specified, but sometimes like this you need not have to specify the underlying universe explicitly. Look at this sentence x was born in the city y in the year z obviously, x has to be a human being, uh, y has to be a city right and z must be a year. You cannot have y an integer and you cannot have z a color and so on. So, something like you know uh, if you have the predicate x greater than 3, I cannot say x is a color green, green is greater than it does not make any sense. So, x has to be from the set of integers or real numbers whatever it is. So, in some cases you need to specify the underlying universe explicitly and sometimes you need not have to spe spell it out explicitly, implicitly it will be understood. Now, let us take a predicate x1, x2. Again, we can have predicate constants and predicate variables. Predicate constants and predicate variables. Like you know, sum of x, y is is that is a predicate constant it represents x plus y is equal to z. Now, if you generally say p x 1 x 2 x z it is a variable you can assign any n place predicate to that and you also have expressions involving predicate variables and so on. Now, when you assign a value particular value for x 1 c 1 particular value c 2 and a particular value c n for x n, this predicate becomes a proposition. For example, take this x plus y is equal to z, if I assign the value x is equal to 2, y is equal to 3 and z is equal to 5, it becomes 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 which is a proposition. 
So, if you assign particular values C1, C2, Cn to X1, X2, Xn, then the predicate becomes a proposition and it takes a truth value true or false. Of course, it has to take values from the underlying universe. Now, a predicate x1, x2, xn, if this is true for all values c1, c2, cn from the universe. you can say call it as u, universe u, then you say that this predicate is valid in the universe u. Then you say P of x1, x2, xn is valid in u. If it is not true for all values of C1, C2, Cn, but for some particular value it is true, then you say it is satisfiable in U. If P is true for some C1, C2, Cn from U. It may not be true for all, but for at least one it is true, then you say that P is satisfiable in you. Now, it may so happen that P of x1, x2, xn is not true for any of the values you give for C1, uh, x1, x2, xn if p is not true for any value any set of i will say any set of values c1 c2 cn then p is said to be unsatisfiable unsatisfiable in you. So, we talk about valid predicates, satisfiable predicates, unsatisfiable predicates and also we specify the universe. Now, you have a predicate say x y p of x y, then you can make it a proposition by giving values for x and y. So, give values for x and y, this becomes a proposition, this becomes a proposition. Now, in this case you say that you are binding the variable, you are binding variables x and y by giving values there is another way you can bind the variables that is by making use of a quanti quantifiers. Binding using quantifiers. For example, you have a predicate P of x. This is a predicate unary predicate involving one single variable x. Now, you can bind it using 
this quantifier for all of x. This is read as for all x or generally you read it as for all x. We can also read it as for every x for any x for each x for arbitrary arbitrary x. Now, when you use a quantifier the predicate is bound. Let us consider some examples making use of this. It becomes a proposition when you use a quantifier. Let the underlying universe be the set of integers. Look at these predicates x is less than x plus 1. You look at this predicate and x is equal to 3 x is equal to x plus 1. Now, to make it a proposition I can use a quantifier like this look at this for all of x, x is less than x plus 1. This is a proposition is it true? This is always true is not it for any value you give for x from the set of integers x will always be less than x plus 1 and so this is always true it is a proposition and it is always true. And if you use for all of x here for all of x, x is equal to 3 it is not correct is not it. If you give value 4 to x 4 equal to 3 is not correct. So, it is true only when you give the value 3 to x and for other values it is false. So, saying that for all of x, x is equal to 3 where the underlying universe is a set of integers is not correct this is a false statement this is a again a proposition it becomes a proposition and takes the value false. Now, look at this one x is equal to x plus 1 for all of x, x is equal to x plus 1 again none for none of the values from the set of integers x can be equal to x plus 1. So, this is in fact not true for any value. So, saying that for all of x, x is equal to x plus 1 is not correct it is a false statement. So, this takes the value false. So, we see that using the quantifier for all of x you can make a predicate a proposition and it takes a particular value true or false depending upon what universe you are specifying. Now, the other universe other quantifier other quantifier is there exists x p of x. You can use the quantifier there exists x p of x this is read like this there exists x such that p of x is true. You can also read it as for some x p of x is true. Okay. Now, let us again take the same three predicates and see what happens when you apply the quantifier there exists. This there exists x is called the existential quantifier existential quantifier. The earlier one which we consider for all of x that is called universal quantifier. Now, again let us take these three predicates and take the underlying universe as a set of integers. This is a predicate if you use there exists x, x less than x plus 1. 
is it true or false? Obviously, for every value of x, x will be less than x plus 1. So, for some value also it is true. So, this is a proposition which takes the value true. Use there exists for this predicate, there exists x, x is equal to 3. Again, if you assign one value x is equal to 3 from the universe, this will be true. So, saying that for some x, x is equal to 3 is correct. So, this takes the value true. And if you say there exists x, x, x is equal to x plus 1, it will not be true for any x, is not it? x cannot be equal to x plus 1 for any integer. So, there exists x, x is equal to x plus 1 is a false statement. So, the point to remember is when we use a quantifier, we are binding a variable and when you bind a variable, a unary predicate becomes a proposition. When it is a binary predicate involving two quantifiers x and y, you have to bind both of them to make it a proposition. So, a predicate can be made into a proposition by binding the variables. There are two ways of doing that, one is by assigning values to individual variables or by using quantifiers and mainly we use two quantifiers, one is for all x and another is there exists x. There is one more quantifier which is denoted like this. There exists a unique x such that p of x is true. This is read as there exists a unique x such that p of x is true or there is one and only one x such that p of x is true. We use only for all and there exists, this is rarely used, but anyway we will uh, learn about this also. The reason is you can express there exists a unique x in terms of for all and there exists, that we shall see now. Now, again let us take the same three statements and use this quantifier, there exists a unique x. Says there exists a unique x, x is less than x plus 1. Is it true or false? Underlying set is the set of integers. If you take any value for x, x will be less than 1. It is not correct to say that there is a unique value of x for which x is less than x plus 1. Okay. So, this becomes a proposition which takes the value false. And there is a unique x, x is equal to 3. For only one value of the variable x from the set of integers, the assertion x is equal to 3 will be true. That is correct. Only when you give the value 3 to x, this will be true. If you give any other value, it will be false. So, there is a unique value for which this is true. So, this takes the value true. And then there is a unique x, x is equal to x plus 1. Again, for none of the values, this is true. So, saying that there is a unique x for which this is true is not correct. So, this takes the value false. Now, I told you that this is not frequently used because you can express this in terms of for all of x and there exists x. 
So, instead of writing there exists x p of x, we can write it this way there exists x p of x and for all of y p of y implies x is equal to y. This is equivalent to saying there is a unique x such that p of x. That is why we do not use this frequently, but sometimes we also use it for convenience. This is a lengthy expression instead of that we can use that unique x in a convenient manner. Similarly, there exists at most one x, there exists at most one x, this you can represent like this, there is this x for all y, p of y implies x is equal to y. So, if you have say something like p of x y z, then x y z, this is a predicate involving 3 individual variables x and y z. If you use say some quantifier like this for all of x p of x y z, then x is bound, x is bound here and y and z are free x is bound, y and z are free, they are called free variables. Again you can bind them by say giving values or again using some other quantifier. So, you can say y is equal to 2 and so you will get for all of x p of for all of x p of x comma 2 comma z. Now, it is a unary predicate because this is bound x z is free and you have bound y by giving a value. If you say something something like there exists z for all of x p of x comma 2 comma z both x and z are bound and so this becomes a proposition and it will take a value true or false if you specify the underlying universe. Let us consider one more example like this, see. Now, we have taken this x plus y z is equal to z sum, okay. So, sum x y z denotes this. Now, if I say there exists y sum x y z y is bound right y is bound and x and z are free if you specify the underlying universe as the set of non negative integers n denotes non negative integers non negative integers. So, x and y and z take values from the set of non negative integers. Then what do you mean by saying there exists y sum of x y is z that is there exists y such that x plus y is equal to z. If all of them are non negative that means x has to be less than or equal to z. So, this really stands for some predicate x z which is x less than or equal to z if the underlying inverse is the set of non negative integers. Okay. Like that we have to analyze the statements. 
Now, how do you uh, expand this or look into this? For example, if the underlying universe I say is 1, 2, 3, it consists of only 3 elements say 1, 2, 3, then for all of x, p of x will represent, it should be true for every value here. So, it represents p of 1 and p of 2 and p of 3. There exists x p of x, this represents a compound statement p of 1 or p of 2 or p of 3. There exists a unique x p of x. How will we represent this? If it is true for 1, it should be false for 2 and 3. If it is true for 2, it should be false for 1 and 3. If it is true for 3, it should be false for 1 and 2. So, you represent it as p of 1 and not of p of 2 and not of p of 3. or not of p of 1 and p of 2 and not of p of 3 or not of p of 1 and not of p of 2 and p of 3. We can express like this if the inverse is finite. In this case, it consists of only 3 elements 1, 2 and 3. If it is infinite, what shall we do? For example, let the inverse be set of non-negative integers which is just 0, 1, 2 etcetera. Then for all of x, b of x will be denoted by the infinite conjunction p of 0 and p of 1 and p of 2 and like that. It is an infinite conjunction like this. There exists x p of x, it is denoted by p of 0 or p of 1 or p of 2 or and so on. Infinite disjunction. Now, if you have a predicate involving individual variables p of x1, x2, xn and there is one more variable y say and you say there exists y p of x1, x2, xn where y is different from x1, x2, xn then binding like this is not going to affect this, this portion. This does not involve y at all. If this does not involve y, by whether you bind it with there exists y or for all it is not going to affect. If you say this, these, these are all equivalent for all of y p of x1, x2, xn and without any binding uh, of quantifiers also they are all equivalent if this does not involve y. So, we have to be careful about the scope of the quantifiers and which one it is going to bind and so on. Now, look at these statements for all of x for all of y p of x y. p is a binary predicate and you are having two variables x and y. Look at this statement for all of x for all of y p of x y. How will you read this? You will read this as for all values of x and for all values of y, p of x y is true. 
Now, look at this there exists y for all of y p of x y and for all of y there exists x p of x y. X is bound by the existential quantifier and y is bound by the universal quantifier. Are these two statements equivalent? You are using the quantifiers in different orders, the order is exchanged. Do they mean the same sentence or are they different? Can you interchange the order of binding? In this case, you cannot change, they, they represent different statements. Here, it, you have to read it like this there exists x such that for all values of y p of x y is true. Now, the value of x is fixed independently of the value of y here and look at this it says for any y there is a x such that p of x y is true. Now, here you take the value of y and the value of x depends on the value of y. Okay. So, the meaning is different you cannot interchange in this case the meaning will change. Let us look at some examples now, but you can ch always change for all of x for all of y into for all of y for all of x and there exists x there exists y you can change the order this will not affect, but here it will affect the, uh, the order will affect the statement. Now, let us consider the examples. Now, let us consider some example where the changing the order of the quantifiers affects the meaning. Let the universe of discourse be the set of married persons, then you, when you say for all of x there exists x is married to y that means for any x for any x there is a person y to whom x is married this is correct. So, this is true whereas if you say there exists y for all of x x is married to y that means there is a person y to whom everybody else including himself will be married. So, that is a wrong statement. So, changing the order affects the meaning completely. So, you have to be careful about the order in which you bind the variables and when you use the quantifiers. Now, let us take the set of integers as the underlying universe then look at this statement for all of x there is a y such that x plus y is equal to 0 that is for all of x there exists y such that x plus y is equal to 0 this is true because any value of x there is a value of y by taking y to be equal to minus x which makes the assertion true. Okay. Now, look at this there exists y for all of x x plus y is equal to 0 this asserts that the value of y can be chosen independently of the value of x since no y exists which yields 0 when added to an arbitrary integer this is a false statement. So, by interchanging the quantifiers you see once you get a true statement another you get a false statement. Look at this one for all of x for all of a y there is a unique z such that x plus y is equal to z this is a true statement you have to choose z to be the sum of x and y. But if you look at this statement for all of x there is a unique z such that for all of y x plus y is, is equal to z this is not a correct statement and so it is not it is a false statement. So, here the value of z is chosen first and then you say whatever will be the value of y you choose x plus y will be equal to z that is not correct. Look at some more statements there is a unique x such that x into 6 is equal to 0 this is true because 
only if you give the value x is equal to 0 this will be true if you give any other value this will be false and look at this one there is a unique x for all of y x into y is equal to 0 this is true because only when you take x is equal to 0 for all y x into y will be equal to 0. But if you interchange the order if you say for all y there is a unique x such that x into y is equal to 0 is false because if y you take to be 0 any value of x will satisfy that and so you cannot say that there is a unique x. So, there is a false statement. The last one look at this for all y there is a unique x such that x plus y is less than 0 is false because you have a several ways of choosing x given a value of y. So, that the sum is less than 0 for any value of y there are many values of x for which the sum of x and y is negative. So, this is a false statement. So, you have to be very careful when you quantify a variable or when you bind a variable using a quantifier and the order in which you bind the variable matters it gives the meaning to the sentence. So, in the next lecture we shall see how to convert English sentences into logical notation using quantifiers and vice versa.